Thanks for staying with us. Joining us now is a 2017 Mandela Washington Fellow of, and founder of Magnissi Collections Nigeria with specialty in the design and manufacturing of handmade handbags and fashion accessories. Her expertise includes strategic planning, leadership, marketing, capacity building, and young empowerment. Uh, we, we love to have Wednesdays because that's when we bring women we love. So mm -hmm. join us as we welcome Neamaka Ngwosisi to the show. Have you. I am excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah better. Yeah, they call you that. Yeah, better. Yeah. They call me. Yeah, oh. I have three, three, three boys. Oh. Three boys. Yeah, yeah. Three boys. Yeah. I say three boys, eight going on 40. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good to have you on the show. Thank you, guys. I'm really, really excited to be here. So we love bringing women like you on our Wednesday shows, especially because when we see women doing great things out there, uh, we love to celebrate them. Just showing that women that we love when women are doing good. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, before you got into manufacturing, got into where did you let like, tell, tell about yourself? Were you in school? Um, how you you know chose what you do your path in life? Okay, so I was somewhere yesterday, and somebody asked me like, how did you start this? So obviously, I went to I went to I had my first degree in Abbey State University, and then I left the country in two thousand and four to further my to further my degree. So I studied my, my master's in social work at the University of Bristol in England. I got married in 2008. I met the love of my life. Oh, I <laughs> and he didn't want to leave abroad, and he was like, I had to come back. It was a, it was a struggle, a decision I had to make, mm. but I did. My, youngest, my elder sister said to me, if you make all the money and build everything I know you are going to build, and you don't have a family to share it with, yeah. it will amount to nothing in the end. So I think you should go. You're a social worker. You can work anywhere in the world. You know, go back and try and see what you can do. I always, I knew your dream was to work for the UN and all that and all that, just go, let's see. So I come back and I couldn't find work. Mm. Mm. Uh, obviously, there's the same, I have my story, is just the same Nigerian story of a young lady moving back, getting married, two o'clock, your co husband, what will you eat? Mm. Says, cook anything, I get angry. I'm like, okay, this is what I've come to. You know, uh, just a woman, uh, you know, I really, yeah, very, you know, that was what my life was. And um, how did I go into bags? My elder sister would call me, let me import bags so you can sell, bring in diapers. You know, 2009, I was like, I'm not going to do any of that. I did all that buying and private buying and selling when we were in school. You know, my mom was a real businesswoman, so I would take her pins and things she made mm -hmm. to her bag to her friends to buy. You know, I don't want that. I want to do something purposeful. You know what the dream was for me. I went into a fusion fair in Abuja. Um, in 2010, and I saw a lady that was wrapping Ankara bags. So you ask, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. And it stuck in my head. It was my younger, it was my, my neighbor, UD, you know, who, had, who was making jewelries at the time. So I went to her stand, and I got into this place, this big, in ICC in Abuja, big event. You know, the fusion was so big then. And I was passing, and I saw this, and it got stuck in my head. At that time... In Nigeria, that was when the whole Ankara thing was gaining momentum. Mm. And for somebody like me who had lived in London, I lived in Bristol for two good years. Anytime you wear your African fabrics, people are turning and looking at you like, oh my God, so exotic. <laughs> 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 you know? Yes, you know. So I was, and, and there was this, um, this company called Design. Shout out to Ogwai Igweze. She started this business with her sister years ago, and they were the ones who were She's making a really. She's a designer. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm in Lagos, we had tomorrow for an event we're here for. You know, she, they were making really trendy pieces. Then when I still had a job, I'll go with my, my colleague during break, we'll drive there, look at what we want to buy, come back, be planning and packing the money to go and buy. You know, they will make tubes and really nice yeah. things, you know, with African pieces. And that was when we were just trying to gain momentum to actually use, you know, wear our fabrics, you know. So that thing stuck in my head. End of, um, I start working in this new NGO. They said perfect job I was supposed to work in. You know, salary, 300 and something thousand, housing, something million. And the month I started working, they stopped paying salaries. Mm -hmm. So my frustration was that, oh my, so that, I think that was a month when my husband was like, ah, maybe it's time to go. We can manage from there. Because <laughs> it was just like, I was a bit, I was just getting frustrated, frustrated. Mm -hmm. But January, I started that NGO. I worked uh, November, December, January. No salary. My graduation comes, I can't go for my graduation. I think that was one of the tipping points for me because I had worked myself 
up to the table in England. I studied this course. I remember struggling to pay my fees with my big sister, my parents, you know. So the fact that I couldn't go for my graduation was like the tipping point at that point. You know, I started drawing those handbags at the end of January of 2010. And my mom gave me a machine. I bring out my machine. I tried to make them, but they weren't structured. For somebody who loves handbags, when I moved back to Nigeria, I came back with two full gadamos, two mm. full bags, like oh, handbags. 32 kg filled with bags, you know. And my husband would be like, how? I remember the day he was going through the bags. Which one is this? I say bag. This one, shoe bag. He said, do you say that one is bag? I say, yes, another bag, you know. <laughs> so I love bags. Yeah. But I had always been a girl who loved structured bags. You know, the kind of bags where you put your key and you can leave. You don't have to stuff it to fill it. Yeah. Yeah. So when... I thought about doing this. I started nursing the idea. I made the Ankara bag. I took it out one day. It was so flabby. I had to put um, a book inside to give it form to go. Mm -hmm. I went out for an event and people were like, oh, this is so nice. Because it wasn't something you saw anybody mm -hmm. trying to do. Yeah. I had a pink dress on. I had this Ankara that had prints that had pink. And I wore it. And people were nursing on it. But then um, I now go into the market. There's a guy that had repaired my shoe in Otaku Market in Abuja. Sonny is his name. Shout out to Sonny. <laughs> you know? I yeah, I have to because these are literally the people who, you know, how this whole thing started. I went to him, a friend of mine, Chinaya as well, she, would, she had a, a boutique. So I would, take, I would go to the market with her. She would buy different things to, to sell. And one day we went into the shop. She shopped in that otaku market. There was this dustbin that had Damax fabrics. You know when the women make the gillies? Mm. Mm. The Damax, the men cut this one. They were selling it for 200 naira. They wrapped it round. But you know how exotic Damax was? I brought it out and asked the girl. It was inside the bin. I said, what is this thing for? He said, it's the one that the men used to make the cap. I looked at it and I said, God, Chine, this is going to look really nice oh, on a bag. He said, mm. Because she didn't know what I was yeah. doing. What I was saying. I said, I'm coming. I took it. I walked down to the guy's line. I think mm. maybe a Basanjo line in Otaku Market or something. And I said to I went to him, I said, Sonny, you've repaired my shoe and I've seen, I saw you tearing a bag up the day I came. Do you think we can, you can, can you make a bag like a small clutch? He said, what do I mean? He had a clutch that he was repairing, maybe the button in his store. He brought it out and said, I said, yes, can you make something like this? He said, yes. I said, can you use this material if I give you, you know what to do to form it? He said, yes. I said, okay, I'll buy this and I'll get you a clutch I have. I want you to do a copy for me. Let me see if we can actually put mm. our print on wow. this fabric. Mm. And that was how he, he wow. made it. I gave him like maybe 3,000, something weird. He told me, come back in, a, in two days. I came back in a week's time. And when he came, I showed him the front to the back. He still used the back to make it. But when he gave me this clutch, I was like, what? Wow. This is possible? Living in England, you know, leaving the country, and I thank God for my sister making me to leave. You know, you see the possibilities of what is there. Mm -hmm. And you live in a country where they're telling us we have to buy everything. I question that, and because I grew up in a family where my, if people were baking or buying cakes or they're changing, we were making them. My mm. cousin were making outfits as beautiful as what Amaka is wearing, mm. as far back as mm. when I was a child. So I had too much creativity around me. So you're I just buying. said no. To be buying, yeah, you, you know, you're buying you stuff, you know, so we make and you take Let's get a few it. questions in for you, because no, I know yeah. that you, you said quite a bit already. I don't yeah. even know where to jump in, but yeah, just <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, but really and truly, I'll just round up. But that was how, yeah, so exactly. the basic story of how, this is how they started. Sonny was supposed to produce those things and I sell. But the normal, usual Nigerian person, I go there, nothing. And then one day, I'm coming there, they hit my car at the back, and I say, no way, I want thing there. I was talking to him, I gave you money, you don't want to produce, you don't get the vision of what I want. And something said to me, you're jobless. Why are you shouting at this guy? Mm. You have been watching what he's been doing two weeks. Every day I leave the office, then come remove my suit, mm. sit down, be watching what he was doing. Why can't you go home and do the side of this yeah. bag? Oh. You can do it. I left that shop, went out, bought a hammer, bought a, a, co a container, mm. bought a brush, came back to him, mm. told him, give me the side. He said, Auntie, I'll give me, what the organic key I'll give me. He said, I want to do the side, give it to me. Mm. And I wow. said, oh, yeah, cut that brush for me the way you cut it for other people. I said, oh, yeah, put my 15 naira gum. When I said I started this business with less than 5,000 naira, oh, people don't understand Lord. it, but this is exactly what happened. Mm. I took the sides home, went back home, in less than 30 minutes, he was doing about eight bags for me. I had finished the size of this bag. Kidding me. I just dropped the phone and called my big sister, Onyoma. I said, Onyoma, I am going to be a shoemaker in this town. And mm. people will ask her. I say, you can do it. <laughs> I say, I'm going to make bags. And people, and literally that was how McNeese started. No, you're kidding me. I went back to him. Yeah, I went back to him later. He finished and showed me what, it, what, 
I needed to do to finish the bags. Mm -hmm. And I took it to this friend of mine, Ogwa, I called. They were going to England for something at the Marriott. And they told me to make about 40. That was my first order. Mm. Wow. wow. And the next, when they told me to make 40, I knew no more. This one is not the one they're making in the market. I need to take this to my house. I started this business, you see today, in the front door of my house. When you open my door, that porch, if it rained, we packed up. My first employee was my gate man Friday. Kidding so me. So big shout, shout out, out to, to Friday. Friday. Yes. <laughs> yes. Friday is still the factory manager today. Wow. 30 wow. years later, oh, he's grown, amazing. he's wow. still there. How many years later? 30, he's going to be 13 mm. in September. We've been running this business. Oh, my Lord. Yes. From that, my front door. I know I hired about seven people from that front door before I moved to the one room in my BQ and built a bachelor and continued. Then the person in the other BQ moved out. We moved in there. And then, like a year or two later, the people in the next house moved out, and we moved into the next house. So it's just been organic yes, growth. Yes, the word. Wow. You know, quiet, quiet growth. I remember having my oh, kids seven it. years later mm -hmm. and having to also pipe down to raise mother the of children. triplets. Yeah. You know, running the business with the teething problems you find in Nigeria, having to find trusted and loyal staff who can help you build your wow. dream. But really and truly, that is literally how my you know, started. Is, I love started this... Women will love. Mm -hmm. There are very few stories that really get us that women will love segment. I think you totally fit yeah. that profile. It does. Because it's a woman who started ground up. And just yeah. like Mariam said, that's the word we're looking for, the organic yeah. growth. Because that's what your view. Your view was very organic. Yeah. We started on the floor, winking in the blind, in the, in, the, in the dark. And we grew. And those are the kind of women we love. And we really congratulate the work Thank you've done. Yeah. Mariam, I want to jump yeah, in. Yeah, I love it. Relatable Nigerian story. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are many women sitting down at home right now thinking, mm. I'm married, I have to do I don't know what to do. Mm. And then to hear, you know, there's a story. Mm. I called one uncle that is in Abuja. I called somebody that, oh, or somebody dashed me a lot of money. Mm. But here we can uh, hear your story of how you started one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. And how, you know, your challenges helped you to build yes. and for me your story is so inspiring because now somebody's going to sit down and has a, a small idea and they know what to do next and what to do next but that's okay you know beyond now here you are you're a big name you give your boxes out in this special <laughs> yellow you know your bags out in these special yellow boxes so you have upscaled yeah. what did it take to go from that beginning to who you are now, an international brand, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yes. <laughs> so what did it take? Um, I was having a conversation before I got in here, and somebody had said to me yesterday again, why, why, how? Because people meet me and they look at the bags. I'm not the only one making bags in Nigeria now. Mm. And I know I've inspired a whole lot. I, I'm in Abuja. I'm not in Lagos, because you know this is the capital oh, of yeah. everything. So yeah. I see people even today copying and doing what I do. Like, I'm releasing lines and people are, you know, taking it on, but I'm happy. So, the lady asked me why. I've had that question, why structured bags first? I told you guys why I wanted a structured bag. Because every woman wants to take a bag, mm. leave their house, just throw their key and go. We don't have to pack everything. Our life is already heavy. But <laughs> how? Um, when I started this business, first of all, I had moved back from England, like I said. <clears throat> The kind of network of friends and people that were my family and friends, like maybe mm. four years into this thing, I'll tell you my friends and family don't use the Macnesi bags. And that's it. I had too much. The critics I have were so much that I couldn't do anything less. It is either I was growing a global brand because all my friends were the high brand. I don't know if I'm allowed to I, mention no. the LVs, you know, yeah. hair. I can't. The big brands, you know, the three million Naira carry. So they're not carrying your bag. They couldn't carry no, your bag. No, even so my sisters. Kind of... Yes, they're here. I remember giving my big sister a tote of mine, and I got to London, and it was in her bathroom <laughs> downstairs. And I said, oh, yeah, but this is where you left my bag. <laughs> said, why do you want me to keep that thing? <laughs> it's, it's a beach bag. Like, my tote bags that people were buying and rocking. And the only time my sister will use it is when she's <laughs> going to, to the beach. beach. <laughs> and she lives in London, so you know this is just during the summer. What? I came in and I was like, yeah. so where do you want me to keep it? And I'm like, oh my God. So right from when I started, the dream had always been, I would say to them, one day you would drop this, your three million naira bags, and you would carry my mm. So there was nothing else I could do than to make sure that mm. whatever I made was world class. class. Oh. The minute you tell anybody that you are a made in Nigeria brand, they start looking at look. you. I've told people I make my bags in Nigeria when I started, and they'll say, let me go to your factory. And I'll bring people that don't per se are not supposed to come near me 
just to show them. Mm. I tell my staff, you can't have a stitch out of place. I started making those things. I'm stitching. I had to learn to use an industrial machine. So I'm not um, a designer who is making anything that doesn't know how it started. Mm. If you see me designing, how, telling you how a shoe is made today, you will be like, my shoemaker still asks, Madam, who taught you? <laughs> I'm like, yes, from watching, I have a very photographic memory. Mm. Anything you're wearing, I can go out and draw it. That's how my brain works, mm. you know? But I had the critics, the people who will say, if you want us, mm. my friends that I'll come to Lagos then, because I lived in Abuja, to stay in their house. I had my friend, Millie. Shout out to Millie. <laughs> yeah. I stayed in her house for all the events I would come for in Lagos then. She lived in VGC. She's a big, she's a voice very big now, you know? And she didn't know how to use an Ankara bag. And you can't blame people. So I'm also not the one that forces you to use it. But I come in and I'm seeing all these things. Like I can take those bags and I'm like, okay, you can have a stitch out of place if you want these people to promote you. So you had friends of mine, people telling them, so you're telling me about this girl who's doing amazing, but you're not using her bag. Mm. Where is it? So I had to make bags that That's the standard. first lady... So that par with the West yes, lifestyle. Can carry, yeah. yeah, I was at the UNESCO <coughs> event last year. It Maybe represented it Nigeria. You, See, you tell the good story. I have to go <laughs> on a break. <laughs> actually, yes, we have to stay market. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.